I guess that's it. Well, Change she said recording button. in progress. The fucking red light's on. We're here. We're back in the studio. Be professional. Do your job. Nice to see you again, by the way. Ah, fuck off. Blood Sugar Sex Magic is the fifth studio album by American rock band Red Hot Chili Peppers. It was released in 1991 by Warner Brother Records and was produced by Little Ricky Rubin. Uh, Blood, Blood Sex, it, it, it peaked at number three on the US Billboard 200 and produced hit singles Under the Bridge, Give It Away, Suck My Kiss, Breaking the Girl, and If You Have to Ask. The album propelled the band into worldwide popularity and critical acclaim. Uncomfortable with fame, Frusciante, the guitar player, quit the band during its 1992 tour. Uh, He rejoined in 1998 to get some of the money, I imagine. And and that's everything anyone ever knew, knew about this album, all of it. It's the entire Wikipedia. There's nothing really left to discuss, is there, Brad? Mm, what? Sorry, I zoned out like most of our listeners just there while you read the Wikipedia. I was actually yeah. reading the um, the label on my can of Dr. Pepper. And uh, I'm so happy that I have a Dr. Pepper to to, uh, to quench my thirst this evening. Um, but this- yes... This week's sponsor, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. It really is. Yeah. Fantastic drink, really. It probably yeah. probably one of the finest beverages ever made on earth. Yeah, that's why they call it the doctor. Um Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Pepper, and for sponsoring this episode. Carry on, Brad. Dr. Pepper. We will also, we won't mention Dr. Pepper ever again. If, We're just you know, going to get looking, straight into the into, into the if, review of the album, if, and there'll be no more mention of Dr. Pepper. Well, carry I just on, Brad. Didn't carry want to say, carry on, I Brad. Mean, just, if I just interrupt you and say you can carry on now, Brad. Okay, sure. If you if you want a surefire way to um, clean cleanly defur your ball sack. Without right. having to get waxed, all you oh, need Dr. to do Pepper? is put some of yeah in a bowl, and then like tea bag yourself, mm. and then thirty minutes later it all just falls out. Well, that would feel sensational with all that that tingling sensation on your balls. It, it, it's you know it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. And then if you have a watermelon <laughs> made by Dr. Whole, Pepper, no, well, <laughs> is this a special no, Dr. No, Pepper watermelon? No. Yeah, watermelons are made by nature. Um, oh. Because some things are natural. Well, they're not sponsoring this um, episode. So just yeah. skip back and, to Dr. And, Pepper. And then, so you've got the watermelon, and then you've got this hot, tingly feeling on your tea bag, right? And so you've got um, wet, hot, willy pepper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brought it back full circle. Yeah. Dr. Pepper. But you, you, um, the missus would obviously appreciate this <laughs> hairless nutsack of yours now brought to you by oh, Dr. Sure. Pepper. So Yeah. Mm. No, I mean, it, it adds nothing but um, aerodynamics, you know, so you can really Just, help when you're trying to get the balls in too in order to achieve the one pump orgasm. Um, it, it's wow. important. Mm. All with one tasty beverage. And very yeah, affordable I mean, as look, well. Yeah. Very. Yes, quite. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yes, Red Hot Chili Peppers. What are we here to talk about? Blood, sex, sugar, sugar, sex, and magic. Magic. Oh. Yeah. All the things we just discussed. Ah. Oh. God, that yeah. was clever, Brad. Very, yeah. very clever. I mean, I'm a <laughs> fucking, you know, a wordsmith. You know, I'm a man who knows. Yeah. Yeah, word things, mouth word things, good. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. What was your, what was your exposure? When did this band first expose itself to you? Well, I was a young gentleman, mm. and just getting into music for the first time, and I heard this Red Hot Chili Peppers band was like the shit. Like, this is the cool, cool band. Uh-huh. 
and I got what I thought instead of like getting all the albums or whatever, I'd just get the greatest hits called Watts or What Hits. I got was yeah, and I got that, and it was a bumper, bumper album. It was not just a double album; it was like a triple album full of songs and lots and lots of songs on it. As most greatest hits, records. well, it, it was Dude. like I remember it just went on forever, and um, there were a couple of good ones, and the rest I didn't like at all. <laughs> I thought it was a bit shit, well, to be honest. I, mean, I didn't really get the fuss of it. To be, to be fair, your statement there is a couple of good songs and most of it's shit. Doesn't that sum up this band? Yeah. yeah this is where I'm, oh, I can hear the comment section already. Oh, God, Brad's is dumping on another band. Brad's is knocking your thing. Um, fuck you guys. This is a band that has just enough good songs to keep going. <laughs> oh, they really are. Yeah. But I like I'm going to I'm going to come out and say it. Here we go. Like and this this uh, this you know this is going to light up our mailbox. Um I think that the Red Hot Chili Peppers are the opposite of Pearl Jam in that uh, Pearl Jam had, oh, I'm going to give them five amazing albums in their early career, early 90s, right? 91 to, I'll give them till 2000. And then every album they put out since then, modern Pearl Jam sucks giant dad rock balls, right? Uh, but for yeah. me, the Chili Peppers, they didn't kick off until 99, Californication. And I feel that the modern Chili what? Peppers. Well, I think I they kicked that... off with this album in a big way. This no, is the fifth. No, no, this album sucked cock. Uh, in a good no, but uh, they got they were popular. Like you don't want this the was cock. the big breakthrough oh, album. Popular. That's not what I'm saying. They're popular. People fucking love the Chili Peppers, but I didn't enjoy them until Californication, and that album I rate extremely highly. But old Chili Peppers. Higher ground and aeroplane, and I'm going to say it under the bridge sucks hard. I think I, aeroplane, I'm, I'm gonna something I want to bring up. Album. Aeroplane was one of those big hit songs that got played everywhere, and I went, The fuck? this song sucks. Yeah, the terrible yeah, song, children's choir. You know, I, I, and again, another yeah. bold statement for me I'm coming back with a plom. I think the uh, the All Saints version of Under the Bridge is better. Well, <laughs> let's 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 get into Under the Bridge because I got things to say about Under the Bridge. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Um, you know, I remember this being a hit song and thinking it just kind of felt like something was wrong with Under the Bridge. You know, this big hit song, everyone thinks it's the greatest thing ever. I was always like, mm -hmm. it's not really working for me. Like, it feels wrong. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in a guitar store one day, and there was a guy, and he played Under the Bridge on a Strat. And I was listening to it thinking, it's a really great guitar piece of music. It sounds really good. But the song doesn't work for me. And it kind of feels like every all the singing is out of tune on the song or something. Like it's it's in the wrong pitch. I don't know. Is it? Because <laughs> like, especially when they're well, like, their core, he's not the greatest singer in the world. But when the choir comes in and under the bridge, like yeah. it all feels like it's out. Under the bridge, I know. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it always grinded on me like they're in different worlds, you know. The keys here just yeah. all but feel they, wrong. They, they, but I don't know said, if it, I don't know if it's in tune or not. Song, but it feels you know, that it, no, no one's no one's ever claimed that. No, no, it's all about the feel. Though I do think again, modern Chili Peppers. I think he's doing all right now. You know, they've found their groove. Songs like Snow and 
hey oh and all their radio friendly they know they've written the song for the radio they've sold out essentially i think it makes for better music than um uh, uh disclaimer i think um give it away is a fucking banger right just skipping around you can't go wrong with that though i do believe that the lyrics given to the chili peppers by crusty the clown in the episode of the simpsons are better than the lyrics in the actual song um no idea what you're talking about oh man they're, they're playing on the, the crusty the clown show and they're going to play give it away and crusty goes backstage and he's like hey, the bit where you sing um what you got i gotta get and put it in you can you say what i'd like because i'd really like to hug and kiss you <laughs> Yeah, it's a genius. Yeah, Simpsons best Possibly. show ever. Yeah, but carry on. I mean, you you picked this album, so you put us through this torture. Yeah, it was. It was I kind of picked. You know, when I when I first put it on, I'm going the first opening song, "Power of Equality." Um, I thought this is a song they should have just thrown out, and they opened the album with it. Like it's kind of just. Sh- yeah, I put filler on this one. Like, it's a piece of shit song. Do you think that these guys, you know, like most early bands, they figured we're never going to fucking make it, right? Underground. They had maybe had a slight hit with um, a cover of uh, Stevie Wonder, Higher Ground, right? And they're just playing the clubs and they're doing all right. And then so they go in to record this album and then, oh, mate, we've got a hit. You know, like nobody would have thought Under the Bridge was going to be a hit or give it away. You know, they might think underground hipsters, but not the world. And then, boom, they've got a hit on their hands. What was the album after this one? Because this album is is long and it's crap. (laughs) Yeah, that was a criticism when it came out. A lot of critics said unnecessarily fucking long. 17 songs. Last song's fucking dog shit. 17! 17 big shitty songs. Um, uh, how do you... Mother's Milk. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. They Albums. Got, didn't they, like, after this album, didn't they get rid of French Chante or whatever his name is? Yeah, I've and done my research. Navarro, right? Okay, so they did 1984, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Then they did Freaky Styly, then the Uplift Mofo Party Plan. Mother's Milk was the song. Never heard of them. Bef- the album before. Now that was right. produced by Michael Bainhorn. Michael and Bainhorn's the guy who went on and produced a lot of big hit albums. Um He sounds like he sounds like the bad guy in a Conan film. He is. Um, Bainhorn! Sorry. Bad on. Yeah. So Bad he, on. um, oh, one hit month, one hot minute. Woman. One hit, one hot minute was the song album after this one, which flopped mm. with, um, Navarro on guitar. Yeah. They had um, airplane there, right? Uh, oh, I'll yeah, look it shit. up. You keep talking. Um, yeah, and Californication was the comeback album. Quality. Uh, yeah, great album. Holy fuck. Why aren't we doing that album? You had to pick this. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> they fell out with Bainhorn because they, he was pushing them to you write know, I... more radio friendly lyrics. You didn't get to the chapel. So when they did Blood Sugar Sex Magic, they got Rick Rubin to produce them and they mm. rented out Harry Houdini's old mansion, apparently, which was they th- suspected to be haunted. But they said it was nice, friendly ghosts. Oh, well. And he was more like a guy like, do what you want, man, feel good, said Rick Rubin. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of went batshit with it and just did what they wanted. And uh, had a big, successful album. <laughs> um, Frusciante left during this tour because they had these big hits and he didn't want to be... He wanted to be an underground band. He never wanted the fame thing. Mm. And apparently on tour, he would stand in the corner in the shadows and play lazily. Um, They played 
uh, Saturday Night Live, where instead of playing the song, he just improvised and did some kind of weird jam. Oh, yeah. Led to a massive argument. He played, um, they played Under the Bridge, but he played it in a different style or key. And yeah. didn't tell anybody. Yeah. 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 Flea followed it, and uh, uh, Kiedis did not. Kiedis just didn't know where he was, and he had it out with him after the show. Um, and he dragged his heels for the rest of the tour until he, he got to a show where he refused, refused to go on, and they were like, well, you have to go on. They had to plead with him for half an hour to get him to go on stage and play, and then he played like uh-huh. a dick. And eventually, he that was his last show, or he quit, or was fired, or all of the above, and they replaced him with some other guy for the rest of the tour. Um, and so that was him. And the old guitarist died of heroin, and uh, at the time, this was when Frusciante thought it would be a good idea to experiment with heroin, so he was all over oh, the perfect. fucking show. Yeah, yeah. Well, the last guitarist died of heroin, so he's like, I'll give that a shot. That Why sounds not? appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good idea, isn't it? Hmm. Um, so you can kind of get a, a, a feeling for how many brain cells these idiots have in this Musical band. Geniuses. Retards. They, uh, they were quite fond of performing on stage wearing nothing but um, cock socks. Is that correct? Yeah, socks on, socks on cocks. Yeah, you did your research on that, didn't you? I never buy. I never bought into this hippie bullshit. Always sort of annoyed me about this band. Yeah, right. being all like, um, go to the desert and be nude and take peyote. Yeah, eat some meat, you fucking freaks. That's my thought. <laughs> you lack protein. Um, are you aware yeah. you did all this? You did. I mean, you did your. 10,000 hours of research for this episode. Um, I did. The, the musical great, the musical Goliath, known as Weird Al Yankovic, uh, on his album, I forget, Alapalooza was the album. Uh, he did his Chili Peppers parody, and it was a blend of two songs from this album, uh, Under the Bridge, and then that, segues into give it away and oh. it's called bedrock anthem mm. and, uh, yeah, we're all about, aware of the works of al yankovic of the great al yeah mm. um all masterpieces yes, I, I i i think he made it a better song because it's it's all about the flintstones yeah that's and, uh, just made it better altogether yeah um uh, there you go just for those that didn't know you need to look if you if you think mm, you know what I'd like to listen to on this road trip? I'd like to throw on Blood, blood Sugar Sex Magic. Don't put on Alapalooza by Weird Al. And, uh, yeah, have a bit better of decision. So the first two songs for me didn't work at all? You didn't like them? Oh, the whole album sucked, mate. You don't need to do song by song with me. I, uh, okay, y- yeah. You feel free. But I, I okay. just didn't... Yeah. Well, the first two sucked. <laughs> And then uh, the third song, we get Breaking the Girl, which I think is a really good song. Oh, quite di- quite different from everything else. I mean, it's not appropriate, you know? Is it? Yeah. Breaking the Girl, it's about having sex with a virgin, right? Like, ooh, Madonna did it better. Yeah. Mm. Well, I like it. I think it's a good piece of music. Okay. Um, no hymens were hurt during the, the making of this podcast. I just want to assure our listeners. At least not in this room. Yeah. yeah. Um, Funky Monks, I put decent. Set My Kiss, I don't really like that song, but all right, decent. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, I could have lied. Uh, I think it's a better piece of music. But I put decent. And apparently, it's about a short-lived affair, Kittis's affair with Sinead O'Connor, which I didn't realise. Ah, I thought she was um, <laughs> of a different persuasion. Guess not. Uh, she's dead now. Muslim. Right? Muslim. Isn't she um, no, yeah, she's dead. 
Oh, shame. It's pretty girl. Yeah. Well, unfuckable now. Um, I could have lied, yeah. That depends. Mellow ship, slinky and B minor. Fuck off. Righteous and the wicked. Fuck off. Give it away. I like that song. That's a good one. That's a bit of a rocker. It's the winner. Um, I kind of found you put it on in the background. Don't think about it too much. It goes by. <laughs> it's this album. Under the bridge, like I say, just the vocals annoy me. Doesn't work. Make it in the rain. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Best song on the album is Psycho Sexy. I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> and then trash yeah. to end it. See Psycho Sexy, yeah. didn't like that one? No, I was, yeah, I was, I was bored at this point in the album. It's just too long, you know? Oops. It's got a great piece of music to end the album, the big crescendo of uh, Big Psycho Sexy. So Psycho Sexy. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. It's really good. Okay. Nice, nice guitar work. That's good. All right. Really pervy lyrics, uh, but I like it. <laughs> of course you do, because you're a perv. D- look, it, uh, I'm just checking. I'm, I'm doing my research as we speak, because that's how professional we are here at uh, PNC Studios. Uh, we're in a new studio now, by the way, everybody. We've used your Patreon funding uh, and got ourselves our own space. It's in an old uh, haunted cottage, but uh, I haven't seen or heard anything yet. And we've decked it out. We stripped the walls, put in all the soundproof padding. We've got producer Eric. He has his own booth now, like a like a really big flash booth with couches and uh, leopard skin and curtains and shit. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we do appreciate it. I mean, we don't need it because. Um, the sponsorship alone we're getting from Dr. Pepper. Um, and Bob's Tampons is another Tampon. proud sponsor of Pointless and Confused. Bob's Tampon. When they come out, they bob in the water. Yeah. Hashtag. Yeah. Bob's Tampons. Uh, sorry, I, think I was carry on. As I was researching. No, I've, Bob's Tampons have a new unisex tampon as well, which is just fantastic. True. Mm. Well, yeah, it's not unisex because there's not one sex now. It's just all the sexes. <laughs> so yeah. if you know if you identify as a toaster, they fit right in those slots too. Yeah, everywhere, anywhere you want to stick them, they work. It just sucks up yeah. the blood. Yeah, it sucks up the blood like like you. It's like a little vampire shoved in forget, your holes. <laughs> Bob's other slogan: "Lick it before you stick it." Mm. That's important. That's written on the box on the outside. So you should read the instructions first. Yeah. Bob's tampons. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, is it slap it before you wrap it or wrap it before you slap it? It works either way, Brad. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Jeez. It's a okay, big hit on. album. It sold millions of records, and I kind of find it pretty average with uh, some well, moments of really good bits. Here's the other interesting thing. Now, I want to get my dates. Now, this album came out September 24, 1991. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Yeah. Give me a minute. Yeah. So we've got September 94, and I'm just typing here. Hang on a minute. September I, I know where you're going oh, with this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Same motherfucking day, Dan. Same motherfucking day. How bad would you feel if you're the shitty band that's finally getting their big break, you're putting out your fifth album, you think you got some fucking hits here, the record company says, Dunder the Bridge, that's a hit, boyo. You put out your album on the same motherfucking day as an, a blue album with a naked baby on the cover. Mm, bad sign. Bad yeah. sign. Nirvana, never mind. Same day. Yeah. All this, all this fucking hippie, hip hop, funk bullshit is dead. Just like hair metal. Now, here's another interesting story. Mm. When Chili Peppers went on tour. They wanted a couple of opening bands and they got a band 
And I've forgotten which one it was now, so that's good. But when this band signed on, they said, oh, I got my friend's band is called Pearl Jam. You reckon they can open for us as well? Mm. And Chili Peppers said, all right. So Pearl Jam were opening for them, who was opening for someone who was opening for Chili Peppers. And they decided um, Pearl Jam weren't um, of enough star power at the time, so they wanted to <laughs> drop them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they went to get Nirvana to replace them. Oh, sure. Who were a bigger band than Pearl Jam at the time. And some negotiations and yada, yada, yada. The middle band got kicked off the bill and it got Nirvana and Pearl Jam stayed there. Uh, got on the yeah. bill and stayed like, there and all those bands to touring together. Show, if I went to a show and like Pearl Jam's going to be the opener, right? Nirvana were always the bigger band, at least in the early days. Uh, Pearl Jam plays. You know what they're going to play? All the hits off 10. Great. Okay, good time. Nirvana's going to come out. They're gonna... Yeah. 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 Right. And you, you know, you, you, it's, if you don't know them, it's, not, you know, you'd be like, okay, this is, this is rocking, but I don't know the songs. Right. You'd, you'd go away thinking that guy was a good singer and maybe there were some sweet solos. I'm going to back away from the mic and burp. Okay. Man, Dr. Pepper. If you want gas and a shaven ball sack, drink Dr. Pepper. Um, Bob's tampons, just Bob's to mop it up. Tam you, yeah, that's uh, our sponsors know their market, you know? Yeah. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? Right, yeah, you got your Pearl Jam. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then Nirvana comes on and they just fucking dominate with noise and it's this wall of fucking raw, raw energy. And it seeps into your soul and your core and your fucking your taint tingling. And then they smash up their drums and fucking everybody's on a high. And then they the feedback finishes. The guys in black come on, set up the next band. And then it's fuck the chili peppers. I'd go home, see the first two bands and then fuck these guys. You'd think so. Yeah. Wait, Seriously. wait, wait. They got two good songs. Yeah. Oh, wait. These guys are naked <laughs> and they've got their cocks and their socks. We should hang out for this band. It'll be totally worth it. <laughs> you know what we would have said back then in the 90s? <laughs> hey! Just do what a bunch of. Yeah. Bundle Bundles of sticks. sticks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. So, just friendly American guys. Just a bunch of friendly American guys. Yeah. I remember an interview with Flea where he was talking about and one of the band members with with him and he said, Oh man, I never told the story before because I didn't want you to think I was gay, but I sucked a dick once. Oh, just to and see I, what it feels like. Okay. Yeah, and I, I thought well, I think you're gay. <laughs> that Which sounds like you, a gay story to me. I mean, pretty that's gay. That's your problem, Dan. That's your problem. Those are your problems, Dan. You're projecting. I'm projecting, yeah. Your problems. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, the, I think the conversion therapy has really worked for me this time. Um, so okay. they're yeah, not my they, problems. They, they're not my problems. They went, with, they went with the chemical castration this time, didn't they? I think. Was that the plan? I forget. No, well, Father Flaherty, oh, he, he's mm. just been wonderful, absolutely yeah, wonderful. Boy. And what he what he said to it me doesn't... is the reason it's failed for me in the past is because you can't cold turkey the gays. You just can't. Right. You've got to right. wean yourself off the gays slowly. Yeah. It's so the intrusive, with, intrusive thoughts, yeah. Yeah, we've been going into the car park outside the church on a daily basis. Mm. And what he does is he just jerks you off in the car uh, behind the church, mm. just every day, just to wean you off the gaze very, very slow. He's a wonderful man, Brad, just a wonderful mm. man. And, and the therapy like, is working beautifully. Yeah, it's like if you're addicted to heroin, 
right? You don't want to just go cold turkey. You want to go to some sort of lighter opioids. So it's just hand yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, and, it's uh, just hand stuff, some mouth yeah. stuff, a little bit of butt stuff. <laughs> so, um, um, I, 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 see, now I'm questioning his methods. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Uh, he, he, I, like he's yeah, doing but, it. He, he hates it. Obviously, he right. hates he, it. He fights but every you day, every step he's, of the way. <laughs> he's in the car park every day, going from car to car, helping young men. Mm. Just right. what a just fabulous person! The whole time, right? He, he, he hates it. Hates it. Yeah, but he's doing it for the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Saving souls every day. God bless you, Father Flaherty. Yeah. Allegedly, it was real fun doing this podcast while while we were you know on air. Um, pre-cancellation. So thank you, listeners. We appreciate it. Um, but, uh, you know, Dan's father Flannery story has, has pushed us over the limit of, uh, of human decency. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, you know, we, uh, necrophilia is okay, I suppose. Um, okay. As per the previous joke. Uh, huh? doctor, you know, dipping your balls in Dr. Pip. Uh, yeah, it's borderline, but it's okay. But, um, yeah. You've lost me now. Anyway, four minutes left to go. Uh, how are we going to rate this son of a bitch? Uh, I'm giving it three funky monks out of ten, only because it gave the chili peppers enough money to stay together and reform to do Californication, which I love. Our producer Elvis is meowing. It's not happy. Um, I'm going to break five hymens out of ten, really. I like it's pretty fucking average fare, really. A couple of good bits. A couple of, couple of stonkers, I'll give it that, and then a bunch of shit. Yeah, you gotta. Oh, but uh, yeah, it's nice. Isn't that unpleasant? These things. But you go through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at the Chili Peppers with kind of you know those rose tinted glasses and go, oh, that were those albums going to be great. I was looking forward to it, and I put it on, and just went. The production sounds like shit. The songs aren't as good as I remember them. You know, there's a bit of energy and youthful exuberance, but it just, uh, just yeah. Modern ears, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, right. I don't know. I didn't have well, a problem with the production, but yeah, it's a lot of average shit. Yeah. Oh, now, um, yeah I just, they got better. Oh, I, I got a text from Father Flaherty. I need a... It's time for my weaning, just to keep that homosexuality okay. away. But... um. So, so okay. should we end the episode there? I think I think it would think we've done another perfect episode, Brad. Um, we'll, we'll end it there. I'll get oh, I'll get weaned as, off as the gaze, and then I'll come back completely straight, and we'll do another episode, shall we? Yeah. The next the next episode will be at least forty seven percent less gay. Yeah. Well, well you know, once Father Flaherty gay, drains my gay balls, then it's going to be. Sh 100% straight for hell. the next 40 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> That's the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, Brad. You can't cold turkey the gays. You got to wean. You got to wean. Okay. Good night. See you in the lawsuit. Bless you all. God bless you all. <laughs>